Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Hello, guys. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Victor. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Math 174 section and open section at it, section B. And um, yeah, so for today, we'll just um, have a quick orientation. quick, but with the last section, we ended up uh, spending the entire hour. But uh, yeah, we'll just go over probably some of the class uh, class policies, some uh, some of the procedures for the class and protocols. So, but basically, I hope you guys uh, were able to access our Canvas website and uh, also the um, and also had a chance to read the modules. So, and that's what we're we're uh, going to talk about today. I could also tour you uh, in uh, Microsoft Teams and our Canvas website. So, because I heard that uh, most students, or actually at least my students yesterday, uh, this is the first time that they are using Canvas as well. So, kaya nagrant rin kami ng content ng Canvas. And then we'll also go through some of the uh, policies in the class. So, yeah. Uh, for the duration of the uh, meeting, if you have any question at whatever point in time, so just either um, type them on the uh, meeting chat or raise your hand or just unmute yourself and start to talk. So feel free to uh, to uh, butt in uh, if you have uh, any question, all right? Uh, quick question lang pala. Uh, do you guys uh, see when somebody's waiting in the lobby? Or hindi, pag may guest na pumapasok sa team, sakikita nyo ba? Yes, yes sir. Uh, uh, pwedeng pa-admit na lang pag may nag-join para, uh, kasi I'm using a second screen when, um, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, PDF file whenever I'm projecting something. So, para lang hindi ako ma-distract ma, ma mo wala yung gusto kong sabihin. Alright, thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, sorry, I can't open my camera today, uh, but Hopefully, we'll meet each other at least virtually uh, next meeting. So I'll just uh, have my camera turned off. Let me know, it's a bit So, but anyway, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I think. Oh, ito pa pala. My internet can be patchy. Na, na, ano ko lang siya. Na realize ko lang siya kahapon when I am uh, uploading the, uh, the recordings of our meetings yesterday. So there might be uh, some times where some words or some phrases will be uh, cut off. So kung hindi nag-come across yung message, paki-inform na lang ako, alright? Na pwede kong ulitin yung gusto kong sabihin. Uh, sorry, I cannot do uh, anything about my internet connection. That's uh, the way it is. So kung merong hindi clear or merong naputol na hindi nyo nag-gets yung message, just let me know, alright? So... Um, Anyway, so let me start by introducing myself. Uh, I'm Neil Jerome Egargin. I'm going to be your lecturer for Math 174 this semester. I also handle the other uh, lecture section in Math 174. So um, either way, uh, for 174 this semester. I had been in the university as an instructor since uh, 2009, but I left back in 2016 to pursue a PhD degree in mathematics and was uh, fortunate enough to finish it uh, just last May. So this is actually my first semester back at uh, UPLB. So I'm happy to be back and, um, and go teach uh, in the university. But during those five years of my study, I was also teaching in the US. Um, that was last semester or actually Last year, we are also doing remote setup. Though, medyo kakaiba yung remote setup namin doon, mas madali. Kasi we don't have to prepare course packs because we, we, we assume that students will have access to the internet. But here, uh, we have a different setup. We cater to both synchronous and asynchronous mode of uh, learning for students. So that's why we have course packs prepared. And uh, we also do synchronous sessions, all right? So more on that later. So let me just go through the module. This is module one. 
which basically basically contains the information that you will need for uh, for the course. Let me just browse through some of the um, salient points. Um, parang ganito lagi yung magiging uh, format nung uh, format nung modules. I don't know if you have seen module two already, but here the first section for the modules uh, is always a before you proceed section. So this is equivalent to the study guide that you might have used in other courses which will tell you uh, what are the things that you need to learn for a week and what, uh, where can you find those discussions or those topics in either the lecture notes or the work text uh, handed to you. Uh, so don't skip this part. This is important, measure wordy, but uh, I assure you uh, the read is worth it. So for instance, um, there is a summary of what uh, is discussed in this particular module. So that would be the first sentence. It also includes the inclusive dates for the uh, for the module. So this module, uh, you should be able to cover it from the 13th to the 17th of September. So that's this week, though. Uh, uh, it's a holiday in Los Banos on the 17th and dahil uh, ang physical ang physical campus natin ay nasa Los Banos. So I think we will uh, we are on a break on the 17th. To celebrate Los Banos Day, so we won't meet on Friday, okay? Uh, so being kunahagad because of that holiday, all right? And then the first paragraph also tells us uh, the date for the synchronous session for the lab. So of course the lab, uh, because the lab falls on uh, a Monday, so that means we don't expect you to have read the entire module for that week on that Monday. So I decided that everything that you will do on the lab should be based on a previous module. So because module one is expected to be um, for the uh, 13th to the 17th of September, so you know time frame that I expect you to be able to read module one. So the lab or the lab activities is held on the next Monday which is on the 20th. So I expect that you already covered module one and you are ready to answer lab exercises on Monday, all right? And then the last, uh, usually the last sentence in this paragraph will tell you what are the required submissions. So for instance, here we have laboratory exercise zero due on the 20th, all right? So sabi niya yung deadline. So the idea is, uh, of course, lab zero is just a consent and declaration form. And I saw that uh, most of you guys already submitted it. So, yeah. Um, um, uh, pero in, uh, in the usual setting, when we go to the formal classes starting next week, right? So you will have laboratory exercises, either half of an exercise on, uh, on a week or the full exercise for that particular week. So the idea is uh, we study the module the week before, all right? We'll cover the topics. And then once you are comfortable with the concepts, you can start doing the, the laboratory exercise, all right? Because the lab exercise are given at the end of each module. So you can start it on your own, probably on a Friday or on a Thursday. I, I suggest, uh, I, uh, I urge my students actually, to take the weekend off, so take time for yourself. I know most of you will have uh, a lot of uh, will be uh, will be having lots of uh, things to do because I heard parang maraming ginagawa yung mga sajante uh, in online setup, especially homeworks or problem sets. But if you find, uh, I, I I suggest that you find some time for yourself during the weekends para re-energize kayo on the following uh, week. So. Kung, uh, kung, hindi nyo naman, kung wala naman kayong time to do the laboratory exercise on your free time on a particular week, the lab classes on the Monday is devoted or can be used for you to do the lab exercises. So kahit pinyo siya magawa beforehand, okay lang. Kasi yung sa lab uh, schedule nyo, which is three hours on a Monday, you can do the laboratory exercise there with the aid or with the guidance of your laboratory instructors, all right? So, uh, yeah. 
Though I suggest that you try to answer the uh, laboratory exercises or at least browse through it or read it so that pagpasok nyo sa Monday sa lab, uh, you can ask your questions, right? So at least alam nyo na yung itatanong nyo sa lab instructors nyo. And so you can spend that Monday session for uh, uh, preparing your laboratory exercise for submission right before midnight that day. So laging yung deadline natin for lab exercise is 11.59 p.m. So that after the lab, if you still need some time to finalize your answers, then you can do so, all right? And the deadline is, yeah, uh, right before midnight. Okay, and then right after this paragraph, you'll see the module objectives. So ito yung mga dapat bantayan nyo when you are reading the module or uh, when you are attending the... Uh, the synchronous classes. So you can read those. And then the second uh, section would be the actual content of the module or the actual discussion. So in this case, the content of module one are just the course uh, information. So course description, so MAT 174 is numerical analysis one, a core course in the BS Applied Math program, but it's a highly recommended major elective in the BS Math program. Actually, um, I have three or four uh, major advices this semester, and I told them to take uh, Math 174 as a major elective, right? So this is a sort of a hybrid course. This is not just a programming course or an applied math course. It's an analysis course after all, so you will also see uh, some proving stuff uh, being done here. So kaya parang isa to sa intersection of math and applied math. And you will see in our learning, uh, in our course learning outcomes, we don't ex expect you to just implement algorithms. We right? analyze nyo rin yung algorithms. So we need to determine some properties of numerical methods and use them in solving scientific problems or mathematical problems. Right? But aside from that, we also expect you to be able to prove basic theorems in three major topics, which you will see in the course outline later, okay? So that's a major misconception about uh, Math 174. The uh, students tend to think that this is just a programming course. Actually, it is not a programming course. It's just so happened that we use computers in order to solve problems for us. But essentially, this is a um, more of an applied math course, but with a little touch of mathematical rigor, Kaya makikita nyo, or if you browse through the work text, may mga proving portions, right? Because we want to understand the theory behind these numerical methods so that when you go out of the course and start doing your special problem, you'll be able to, number one, pick the best numerical method for your particular uh, SP or thesis problem. And number two, maybe you can design your own numerical method because designing a numerical method entails a lot of uh, theoretical background. Okay. So basically, those are the uh, course learning outcomes. So this is what is expected from you after you uh, you finish the course. Now moving on to uh, the course outline. So chapter one is basically a. Uh, review of what you got or what you already discussed in AMAT 152. I checked the course outline of AMAT 152 and these things are there. Actually, I'm I'm one of the um I'm one of the uh, proponents who wrote uh, AMAT 152 and I remember putting this in a course proposal. So kaya yan yung reading assignment niya for the week. So, basahin yung Bachman Lando notations or brush up on your understanding of them, machine errors and floating point representation, and numerical algorithms. Though there is no assessment regarding this, so on Monday, um, wala namang lab excerpt na itetest kung nag, uh, nag review nga kayo ng mga topics na to. But it is highly encouraged that you do review these things because we might be, a, uh, we might, uh, we might mention these things when we discuss specific numerical methods in the lecture and in the lab. And I wouldn't do a full lecture or a full review of these things. So you can consult your AMAT uh, 152 uh, notes on this, 
or you can read the specific portions of uh, the work text in Math 174. So probably I can also show you, or I, I think I mentioned here in the course, uh, in the module, what are the, the pages uh, in the work text that covers these topics, right? And if you think this is too much for a week to review, don't worry. Uh, you can do the review uh, until next week. Wala ang assessment for this uh, for this topic. And uh, um, di pa naman siguro natin siya kakailanganin lahat uh, starting next week. But make sure to have read on these. Um, kasi baka bigla na lang magsabi ako ng terms related to convergence. So you should be able to understand what convergence is. Uh, incidentally, yung kabilang uh, lecture section um, requested to have a quick review of these topics, at least one session, and I'll try to cover as many as possible. And we'll do it tomorrow at, uh, let me see, what's the time slot for the other section? Uh, nandito kaya. Yeah, we'll be doing it tomorrow during our class hours. Uh, time slot nila. Uh, let me just check in my calendar. Um, yeah, tomorrow, 11.30 to 12.30. So if you're free from 11.30 to 12.30, you can join the review tomorrow. I'll share the link in the Canvas website. Uh, so you can join. If you have classes, then uh, I'll post a recording so para pwede yung panoorin and use it as a as a springboard for your review of these topics. Unfortunately, I cannot hold a similar review for you guys because holiday nga sa Las Banos on Friday, so I cannot schedule or force you to go into class on Friday. Okay, okay lang ba yun? So either. Join us on the lecture tomorrow, uh, 11.30 to 12.30, or uh, watch the recording, okay? Okay, any questions so far, uh, so far guys? None for me, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, all right, so then the chunk of Math 174 focuses on three major themes. So approximation of polynomials, this usually, uh, um, I think this will cover about uh, um, probably more than uh, around 40% of, uh, of uh, the class. And then numerical differentiation, which will cover probably about 20% uh, of uh, the class time. And numerical integration, which probably will uh, will eat forty percent of our time. So uh, yeah, at the three basic uh, teams or three major teams in the course. And I guess I scheduled problem sets for each of these. You will see that in the uh, in the uh, rating scheme later. Okay. And then we'll talk about uh, the mode of delivery for the class. Uh, hold on, give me a moment, guys. Uh, Okay, I'm back. Um, the mode of delivery, um, I wrote here, it would be in asynchronous mode, but uh, based on uh, what I heard officially from my colleagues and from actually from some students, they also prefer to have it in synchronous mode. So, we'll do a hybrid uh, setup. Uh, we're in, I will hold synchronous lectures also, not just to answer your questions or consultations, because usually uh, I understand if students will have a hard time uh, just reading the module, relying on reading a work text, um, because I always find it easier if somebody is explaining to me things verbally. So nothing beats yung parang face-to-face uh, -face lecture pa rin. But unfortunately, obviously, we cannot do that right now. So the best next, uh, the next best thing is for us to do live lectures so but the synchronous classes will not be required all right but it is highly encouraged 
So now you have, uh, actually you have three options. Number one, you join the synchronous classes live because there I will try to discuss the contents of the module for that week. I'll try to simulate a face-to-face -face class instead of me going to the classroom or we going to the classroom and I writing on the blackboard uh, and then you listening or taking notes. We'll, we'll just bring that to a virtual setting. I'll project my, uh, my PDF file here. I annotate every now and then. And I'll deliver the lecture remotely and you'll listen um, uh, at the comfort of your homes or your dormitories. Um, yeah, that's option number one. Option number two is if this schedule is not very convenient for you or your internet connection is not good during this uh, early or rush hour or peak hour, uh, you can watch the videos. I'll, uh, I'll uh, give you a link to the video recordings, uh, and that's why I ask you to sign the consent form so that I'll have some sort of freedom to choose where to upload this uh, materials para mas accessible to students. Um, so you can watch them at your own uh, pace if you work best or better uh, during the wee hours. Kung mas okay kayo na 10, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. na go work, then watch the recording during then. So you can do that. But if you are not... Uh, if you don't have the means to uh, watch the videos or join the lectures live, or basically it's just your preference or you see you uh, learn best when reading things, then that's fine because all the materials will be in the modules and in the work text. So that's how we designed the work text. Actually, I wrote the work text way back in, I think, 2015. And the idea when I wrote this material is for it to be a self-contained material. So this, kaya medyo wordy siya, mahaba yung work text. Because I wrote there my script or what would have been my script if I am delivering the lecture live. So kaya madaldal yung work text. Kasi yun nga, uh, inisip ko parang transcript yun ng mga lectures ko. Ganun ko siya dinidiscuss. So I think either way, uh, if you choose either uh, watching the videos, joining the lectures live, or uh, reading the work text, and the modules, then I think you're in a good shape for the class. Okay, so that's why I say it's a it's a a, a combination of synchronous, asynchronous, and so on. And it's up to you. Pwedeng pag combine mo yung mayon. There are certain weeks that you can join the lectures live, or there are weeks it, that it's uh, it's more convenient for you to just read the modules and the work text. Then that's perfectly fine. All right. Uh, so. Um, Maybe I'll say something about uh, the recordings of the sessions. So uh, this is one feature of Microsoft Teams that I like. Uh, maybe I'll, I can tour you around Microsoft Teams later. Um, once we end the meeting, the uh, recording becomes readily available via the Teams app. So makikita niyo siya kagad doon. Hindi niyo na kailangan antayin na mag-post ako ng link kasi may access kayo doon sa recording anytime. Uh, papakita, ko, papakita ko kung saan siya makikita. And then uh, it opens directly using SharePoint or OneDrive provided uh, to you together with the Office 365 uh, subscription by the university. So you will have access to it. You'll have unlimited um, um, storage for, for videos like this. Uh, unfortunately, some students uh, find it hard to access that site. Uh, sometimes must uh, accessible in Bawa in YouTube. So that's why I have my YouTube channel where I post uh, video recordings. Uh, some students find it uh, more convenient because may mga data plans na free yung YouTube uh, browsing or watching of videos there. And yeah, must accessible siya kasi hindi nyo kailangan mag-log in to your uh, Outlook account and so on. So that's why I usually upload uh, my lectures in YouTube. But um, I hope it's okay with you guys because when I upload the uh, video recordings, lalabas yung profile pictures nyo and your names might be displayed. So uh, though I don't think uh, your names or initials or profile pictures are sensitive information, but if you're not comfortable with that, Please let me know via the chat or via an email na sir hindi po comfortable na naka-display sa YouTube yung pangalan ko or yung profile picture ko. Just let me know, all right? 
because um, if it's okay naman with everyone, uh, it's uh, more convenient for me because I'll just have to upload the recording as it is into YouTube. Pero kung hindi kayo komportable, kailangan ko pa siyang i-edit at i-blur yung pangalan or yung uh, profile pictures niyo dun sa videos, which will take up uh, uh, some of my time. So, yeah. If it's okay with everyone, then I'll just upload the video as it is. Okay? Hindi ko na siya i-edit. Kasi magre-render pa yon, Magkaka-delay sa pag-upload. So, yeah. Uh, just go let me know if you're not comfortable with that. All right? Okay. So, um, and then I'll give you the links. Uh, I'll go to Canvas later and I'll show you where I put the links for the video recordings. Uh, para kung more of a Canvas person kayo, Canvas yung ina-access nyo. Or if you're more into MS Team, send a better because you don't have to wait for me to share with you the link. Okay. And speaking of Canvas, that's our official learning management system for the course. So you can access it through this website. So I hope you guys are already members of Canvas. Meron pa bang nahirapang mag access ng Canvas among you? Uh, have you used Canvas before or first time din bato? First time po. Okay. And then, may iba na ba kayong klase na gumamit sa Canvas? I know some of my colleagues from the math department are use are transitioning to MATLAB na. Ah, to MATLAB. To Canvas na. How about the others? Um, oh, guys, mag-react naman kayo. Post nyo muna yung pinapanood yung Netflix dyan sa tabi or yung YouTube video sa tabi. <laughs> so you can use the reaction buttons or you can just speak. Uh, or masyado pang maaga. <laughs> Oh, alam ko yan, yung mga uh, YouTube, yung mga Netflix. I've been there. Naging sadyante rin naman ako last semester. Ginagawa ko rin yan sa mga lectures. And then, uh, yeah, if it's uh, if you have your coffee with you or you're having breakfast, then enjoy your meal. So, yeah, salita naman kayo guys, okay? So, uh, yeah, I hope you didn't have any problem joining Canvas. But if so, just let us know so we can assist you with it. So, nandito naman sa first uh, paragraph, uh, first bullet, how to access Canvas. And probably let's tour around Canvas a little bit. Hold on. Share ko lang yung screen ko. Lipat ako sa laptop. Okay. So, I hope you're seeing my, 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 uh, my Canvas screen here, my web browser. So, here, this is uh, what you should see. When you log in into Canvas, so you'll you'll be directed to the home page. welcome message. I have the Teams information here, and then I have the video, uh, the uh, lecture meeting links, and then your lab instructors will post the uh, the lab meeting links. Though ibay bakamin ng teleconferencing platform, so uh, I think B1L is using Zoom, B2L is using. Uh, uh, Google Meet, uh, V1L is using Zoom Meeting. I don't know what V2L used last uh, last time. Pero dito niya siya ideally makikita. Uh, I'll post the link to the uh, section uh, section V uh, session tomorrow, 11.30 to 12.30. Papalitan ko siya dito. Uh, if you want to join. Or if not, uh, you'll, you can watch the video recording or do the review on your own. So it's perfectly fine. It's not required. Uh, but highly encouraged para hindi na kayo magbabasa mag-isa. Okay. So if you scroll a little bit down, you're going to see some quick links here that will uh, direct you to some useful materials. I suggest that you try to access the work text first. So click on the work text icon here. Okay. So if you click on the work text uh, icon, you will be led to my, my uh, personal web page uh, or my personal website, my teaching page. You'll see here some of the materials I prepared or I used before. Scroll a little bit down and you're going to see a link to uh, uh, the work text version 2. Right? Person 2 siya kasi inedit ko siya. Uh, before the semester started. So if you click on that link, you will be able to download um, the Vortex. This is 193 pages. 
and this would be uh, the main reference for the course. So, pwedeng eto na lang yung gamitin yon. No need to uh, to buy or to uh, download other books. Though there are some suggested uh, other readings, pero if you have the work text, then uh, you're fine. So uh, the work text or uh, the PDF itself uh, has um, uh, links enabled. So say in the table of contents, you just you can click on any of these, and you'll be led to the to that particular page. So polynomial approximation, for instance, click on that. No mabagal yung internet ko, dapat offline yung ginamit ko. There we go. So you'll be led to uh, chapter two. So nandiyan yung discussion. But uh, my idea for the modules is for it to be a self-contained um, self contained material. So some module where we talk about polynomial interpolation, kinapipaste ko lang yung laman nitong work text papunta dun sa module. So, um, okay lang din naman na patingi-tingi nyo siyang i-download dun sa modules kasi ito rin naman yung makikita yung examples dun or discussion dun. Pero if you want to read ahead, halimbawa, uh, for, for instance, this uh, today, ang available pa lang ay hanggang module 3. So, if you want to start reading, so kung advanced kayo mag -isip, you want to start reading ahead, so you can do so, uh, i-follow nyo lang yung discussion dun sa work text kasi yan din naman yung nakakopy-paste dun sa work, sa modules. Because my idea is the modules should be self-contained. So kung, kung dun lang kayo nagbabasa, it's perfectly fine. So yan. So yan yung mga discussion. And then let me scroll a little uh, down. Because uh, after some topics here, merong mga sample exercises in the work text. So yun yung kaibahan niya sa module. So in the modules, I, I did not include some practice exercises. Meron lang dong mga answered examples or solved examples. But I didn't include sample exercises in the uh, modules. So you can see them in the work text. So for instance, ito yung mga sample problems dun sa uh, basic polynomial interpolation. So you won't see this in the modules uh, para makasave kasi ng... Uh, ng space dun sa module, hindi ko na siya sinama, but if you want to refer to additional examples, just go to na yung actual exercise, hindi na itong examples na to. Alright, so kaya if you have uh, the internet connection, download the uh, word text uh, right away. So, yun, uh, para meron kayong instant reference, okay? And you don't have to log in or to, to use the internet whenever you want to access the work text, okay? Uh, okay, so that's for the work text. And then you can click on the modules uh, icon. In my oblation a picture, and that will lead you to the Canvas module page, all right? So the modules are weekly materials. So for week one, all you need to look at is module one. Download yun lahat ng under ng module one. So you have here, uh, the, the actual module itself, which is the one I'm projecting earlier, so module one and cover, and then laboratory extra zero, that's the declaration form, uh, and then the privacy statement uh, um, declaration, or the data privacy declaration, which serves as our first laboratory exercise, worth five points, so uh, and deadline is September 20th, and then here's the actual form. Now, in succeeding weeks, makita nyo module na lang tapos lab exer na assignment, correct? So, uh, makita nyo dito weekly ano yung dapat yung gawin, ano yung mga files or assignment na kailangan yung i-access, correct? So, if you click on lab exer zero, makita nyo ano yung kailangan gawin sa lab exer zero. There might be some instructions here. So, read it. And then, kung may file attachment siya, kailangan, nandito rin naman siya, pwede nyo siyang i-download. Now, there is a deadline that I set here. So the deadline is Monday by 11.59 p.m. Though, uh, if you cannot meet the deadline for whatever reason, just let us know. For uh, properly advanced, okay? So nilagay ko lang yung mga deadlines for you be guided para ma-pace nyo yung sarili nyo kung ano ba yung kailangan yung gawin and when is the ideal time for you to finish it para hindi kayo maiwanan para ma-pace nyo rin yung uh, sarili nyo sa course because I don't want uh, 
uh, this to happen na uh, napaka flexible nung deadlines tapos uh, hindi niyo siya ginagawa matatambakan kayo at the very end uh, of the semester so i don't want that to happen so that's why i put the deadline so the deadlines are there but if for any reason you won't be able to meet the deadline just let us know and uh, on a case to case basis we can decide to accommodate uh, extensions or accommodate requests for you for late submissions but we wouldn't know that something is uh, not right or is not going well for you if you will not inform us so keep the communication channels open kung sabi niyo sir uh, medyo anxious po ako nitong uh, huling linggo and i might not be able to submit uh, a particular lab exercise or a particular homework then just let us know and we will uh, consider your case and kung tingin namin uh, yeah uh, um, uh, worthy naman na pagbigyan ng leeway or consideration, then we can give that to you. But again, we wouldn't know if you will not tell us, all right? So please don't hesitate to request for extensions. I evaluate naman namin siya for, uh, on a case to case basis. And you don't need a formal excuse. Salimbawa, binyo lang na, uh, sir, uh, may pinagdaanan yung family ko this, uh, this week. So baka hindi ako makapagpasa ng lab exer on time. Then let us know. Hindi kailangan maging or an excuse letter or medical cert. We will believe you. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But please do let us know. All right. Here to help you in these trying times. Okay. Now, aside from the due date, I also put here uh, availability of the uh, of the module. So available lang until September 27. Outside of that. The lab expert will close in Canvas. Nobody can submit anything anymore. All right. So, so yon. Be wary of uh, the deadly deadline, the deadliest deadline for a particular uh, uh, for a particular assignment. And again, if you cannot meet the deadline, then sabihan yung kami para ma open up namin ito para sa inyo. We'll evaluate it on a case to case basis. Okay. Now, by default, sa Canvas yata na set ko na for every day of late submission, may 10% deduction. So that will be in effect. But again, if you cannot meet the deadlines, if you need a couple more days to finish it due to some non-academic reasons, then just let us know. Para ma wave ko yung deduction for late submission. Okay? Is that okay? Uh, is that fine? Kasi bawal yung uh, stringent deadlines this semester and I totally agree and understand if uh, there are times that you cannot meet those deadlines, okay? Now going back to the main page, uh, pwede nyong i-click yung assignment button uh, that will lead you to the assignment page in, uh, in Canvas. Makita nyo naman dito lahat ng kailangan i-submit uh, na list by date or by type. So basically here, uh, makita nyo lab XR0, nandiyan yung due date, nandiyan yung availability, okay? So kung gusto nyo lang makita, ano nga ba yung mga kailangan kong ipasa, uh, nandito na siya. And it, show, it will show here, uh, kung nachekan ko na siya, ano yung score na nakuha nyo, okay? So that's the assignment page. And then you can also click on the video recordings icon here. If you click on that, pupunta kayo dun sa recording webpage. Paltang ko pa pala yung banner. Hindi uh, ko na siya na bago. So here you will see uh, the video recordings. So um, if you click on say, here is kayo kung anong ginawa namin sa lecture V, you can click on it. Tapos uh, malilid kayo dun sa, dun sa video recording for that session. I request your lab instructor to so they'll have either a Google Drive folder or uh, individual link. So yeah, and then you should visit from time to time. So if you cannot join the the review session tomorrow because you have a class or you have something else to do, uh, you can access the recording under lecture B. Right. So that these are the I think these are the major pages that you can visit. 
the information of your instructors here. Uh -huh. One nice thing I want uh, with Canvas is the grade section on the sidebar. You can see, click on it. You'll see a summary of all the graded or all of the assignments, graded or not. You see, dito kay test to the nagtry ako ng bigyan siya ng grade sa lab XR 1.1, 37 over 50 for instance yung nakuha niya. Lab XR 2 ay 15 over 50, so that's 52 over 100. So makikita niyo na dito yung relative standing niya. So based on what is or what what are the requirements are graded, makikita niyo yung standing niya sa klase. Tapos dito sa taas, nakalagay din yung total with uh, the numerical grade equivalent. But uh, what, what, what is shown is your uh, relative standing. So based on um, what was already graded. Okay, so meron kayong access dyan. Once na-checkan ko na kagad, real time, yung laboratory exercise or yung uh, problem sets. So by the way, our uh, grading scheme, 40% lab XR, 40% problem sets, and 20% final project. We'll talk more about the pro final project as the semester progresses, but essentially that's uh, the grading scheme. Uh, I saw that most of you guys already submitted lab XR zero. So ganun yung mangyayari. Um, I will, um, Nakita niyo ba yung annotation? Dun sa mga nag-grade ko na, nilagyan ko siya ng noted dun sa baba. So, ganyan yung mangyayari sa mga problem sets because I will be personally grading all the problem sets across all laboratory sections. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'll annotate on the PDF submissions that you will uh, upload in Canvas. So, para makita niyo rin. And uh, I'll encourage your lab instructors to do the same PDF para parang Yan pa rin, yung parang usual quiz or exam na ginagawa natin during the face-to-face -face days. Um, yun pala. Uh, 10 p.m., 2 or 3 a.m. And kung ginaganahan ako, I might grade exercises during those wee hours of the day. So if you are not comfortable receiving notifications that your submission notification off through your uh, Canvas accounts. My settings dyan. I think, saan nga ba yung settings? Yeah, dapat may settings na lalabas somewhere here that you can turn off the notification. So kung ayaw yung ma-notify na uh, na-checkan ko na yung problem set 1 or problem set 2, then uh, please turn it off. I cannot do it uh, um, from a case-to-case -case basis. So if you don't want to be disturbed or you don't want to be notified, once uh, your work are graded then, or your works are graded, then kindly turn it off. So, kung ayaw nyo na i-star ba kasi minsan baka 1 a.m. mag-notify mag si, uh, si Canvas na nag-check na ako ng extra nyo. So, uh, kindly mute the notifications if you want to be disturbed. Because some students apparently find it um, um, a little bit triggering na makita na Nag-grade si sir, matutulog na siya dapat. Pero dahil nag-grade ako ng exer, uh, hindi siya mapakali, so parang madidisturb na siya. So if you don't want that to happen, then kindly turn your notifications off. All right? And uh, I guess that's it for Canvas. Uh, there are other helpful links. There. Explore it uh, on your own. So for instance, the syllabus is also a good guide. You have the calendar on the side para alam niyo yung mga may due date. So here, we have due dates on the 28th, on the 27th, and on October 4th. So, may mga kailangan kayong submit during those days. All right. So, uh, any questions so far? Wala naman questions? Episode K today. <laughs> no questions? So, uh, what else? So, what do we need to talk about? Um... Oh, in the modules, uh, or in module one, I also have the course timetable there para guided kayo. So kahit wala pa yung module, alam nyo kung ano yung in-expect in the next few weeks. So uh, kung hindi pa available yung modules in the Canvas website, then you can refer to the work text para alam nyo kung ano yung kailangan basahin. Okay? Uh, questions?
Hello, sir. Yes, um, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to ask them po if there's a certain format that um, we should apply kapag po nagpapasa ng um, exercises. Oh, yeah, good question. Uh, I would uh, like to refer you to your lab instructors kasi sila yung check ng lab exercise. I don't know if they will require you to say submit the uh, the programming codes that you used. Uh, though I believe Math 174 should be independent of a programming language. So kaya wala kaming prescribed programming language if you're comfortable uh, using Python or MATLAB or Excel in some cases. Mas okay minsan yung Excel lalo na sa numerical differentiation. Or if you're more, kung gusto yung mano-mano siya gawin at kaya yun naman. So feel free to do that. Uh, nilagay ko sa Canvas ang submission ay PDF file uh, because I was uh, thinking na since programming language independent naman yung course, yung results lang yung hahanapin namin. Uh, we don't, we wouldn't uh, dig deep into you, how you got those answers. You signed uh, an academic honesty declaration anyway, so we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. So kung may code kayong ginawa or ginamit, uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't want to see those unless for certain topics, but I don't know with your lab instructors. So kindly ask them and I will adjust the submission setting in uh, Canvas if needed. Kasi sa Canvas nilagay ko PDF yung isa submit nyo. So generally, uh, you can uh, submit PDF files. So either you, you, if you have a tablet, so you can write on your tablet, save it as a PDF and upload it to Canvas. If you don't have a writing tablet, what you can do is to write it on a piece of paper, just as like uh, we do. Hindi nyo na kailangan siyang i-print. Uh, kung hindi naman kailangan, wag nyo nang kopyahin yung given. Kasi may kopya naman kami ng PDF ng given file. So what you can do, write your solutions uh, legibly and present it in a nice way on paper. Write it down and then uh, use some mobile app to take a picture and convert it to PDF. So some apps that you can use, Adobe Scan is a good one. I usually use it as a good companion to my Adobe Acrobat PDF reader in my phone. So ang gagawin lang sa Adobe Scan, pipicturean ko isa-isa yung pages ng work ko, tapos automatically isa-save niya sa PDF. And then it's a single PDF file composed of multiple pages coming off from, my, my, uh, from photos taken by my cell phone camera. And then my PDF file na ako, pwede ko na siyang i-upload sa Canvas. So, um, another app that you can use is Cam Scanner. Or you can also uh, take a picture, paste it on a Microsoft Word file, and save it as a PDF. My only request, especially for problem sets, is that for a particular submission, submit a single PDF file. Uh, wag naman sana yung, ano, kung 10 pages yung solution nyo, 10 magkakahiwalay na PDF o oh, sampung hiwa-hiwalay na pictures yung i-upload nyo. Kasi mahirap mag-download or matrabahong mag-download pa. So mas okay kung isang file lang yung i-download ko at i-upload ko pabalik kay Canvas. Okay? Now for problem sets, uh, hindi ako strict sa, sa format, no specific format. As long as I can read and understand what you wrote, that's perfectly fine. Kung mas comfortable kayo na type written, probably yes, you can do so also. Pero... I would love to see your handwriting on paper, but kung mas comfortable kayong i-latex o i-type, uh, then that's also fine. Don't mas matrabaho yun. Um, and then the file name, uh, personally, hindi ko na kailangang sabihan kayo kung anong file name kasi honestly, sa Canvas naman ako mag-check. Hindi ko na kailangang makita kung ano yung file name. Automatic naman pag chinekan ko sa Canvas, naka-upload na rin siya sa Canvas, ni hindi ko makikita kung ano yung file name. So I'll grade everything via Canvas naman. So no need to worry about that. Okay? So meron tayong LMS. So let's take advantage of its features. So I don't want to, to worry about those tiny details anymore. Okay? I hope that answers your question, Lyra. If it does, then I saw Victor raise his hand earlier. Uh, do you want to say something, Victor? Uh, well, no, sir. Na sagot na din question. Okay, thank you. Um, what else? Um, ano pa ba? May tanong ba kayo? May gusto kayong suggestion? Makipag-negotiate ba kayo or haggle with the grading scheme? 
uh, habang nag-iisip kayo ng tanong, uh, please consider this as a safe space, uh, a judgment-free zone. Uh, if you have a question, you feel it is dumb or stupid, ask it anyway. All right? I will not judge you for it. Uh, I hope your classmates will not judge you for it. So uh, yeah, don't hesitate to ask questions, however dumb or foolish you think it is. I always tell my students, um, uh, it's better to appear like a, poo, uh, like a fool for, uh, for a moment than to remain one for a lifetime. So at the moment that you're asking your, your question, you might feel dumb or stupid, but it's better that way so that I can address your question. I will not judge you for it. So kahit napaka simple or basic na questions, I'll be more than happy to answer it. Kesa kim kimin nyo yung question nyo and uh, maglinger yung, um, yung gap sa pagkakaintindi nyo dun sa topic forever. So I don't want that to happen. So if you have questions, ask uh, ask them. So uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, Though may dalawa kasi kinakabanaw pag walang tanong yung mga sudyante. Kasi may two, may two possible scenarios. Number one, it's a no question of type one. Type one yung tawag ko. Na naintindihan nyo lahat. To the point na you don't have any question because everything is clear. Alright? Or, meron type two naman. Type two is uh, you don't understand uh, anything. Wala kayong napulot ni kaunti dun sa lecture. Uh, not enough for you to to uh, to craft a question. So, wala kayong matanong kasi wala kayong napulat kahit ano. And that's uh, that's terrible, okay? So, if that happens, pwede yung sabihin, sir, wala po talaga kaming naintindihan. Pwede bang ulitin natin? Uh, I'll be open to that. It's uh, better for me to know where you at kesa uh, i-assume ko na Naintindihan nyo lahat, magbibigay ako ng problem set o ng lab exer, assuming that you got everything tapos hindi naman pala. So I don't want you to suffer that uh, that that thing. So feel free to ask me to repeat something, to rediscuss something, or if you want to have uh, additional examples, I'll try my best, pero I can refer you to some references if need be. Okay? So I hope that's clear. Ask your questions straight away. Uh, I will, I wouldn't mind. Um, yeah, take advantage of your laboratory instructors. So they are there to guide you for the laboratory exercise. When I met with them, I told them uh, they are free to guide you for the lab exercise. That's the point of holding Monday sessions. So if you have a laboratory exercise, you don't know where you're going to or you're stuck in a particular uh, step, then you can ask your laboratory instructors during the lab sessions. They will not tell you what the answer is, but they can lead you to the right direction. So, yeah. And then, para po lido na rin yung isasubmit nyo uh, come midnight of that Monday. All right. So, uh, any questions from you? Kanto ba talaga kayo ka tahimik? Oh, yun pa pala. I, I initially proposed since I have uh, I have two lectures at uh, two lecture classes for Math 17 for this semester. I proposed in the other lab uh, in the other lecture class that I I am I, I will be holding two sessions for lect uh, two sessions a week for the lecture. So since magkaparehas naman kayo ng Math 174, I was thinking that the first uh, one session will be during the time slot of section B. The other session will be during our time slot section B. Para twice lang ako magli lecture sa isang linggo. So kasi parehas lang naman yung content. So kung yung module 1 or the module for that particular week, it is discuss ko yung first half sa section B time slot. So my students there can attend live and then you can also attend if you're free, but if you have classes then uh, pwedeng panoorin nyo na lang yung recording. And then I'll do the second half on our schedule every Wednesday, 8.30 to 9.30. But my students in the other lecture session thought that it would be better if we meet separately. Mas gusto nilang mapanood live. And some of them have classes uh, during 8.30 to 9.30 of Wednesdays and Fridays. 
so they cannot attend live sa time slot natin. So I am thinking, if it's okay with you, though it's not required, I'm going to meet you twice a week, Wednesday and Friday, 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. during our usual class time. But uh, if you prefer it, you can attend the sessions live. So, uh, apat na beses ako mag-lecture ng 174 per week. Pero almost parehas lang naman yung magiging content nila. Except for us on Friday, it's a Los Banos holiday. So, we wouldn't meet virtually. Okay? So I think I'll go with that suggestion. So I'll I'll just meet uh, the two lectures separately, but the contents would be similar, or yeah, uh, almost equivalent. Sila dapat. Okay, other questions? Wala na po bang questions? So if there are no questions, then uh, I hope in the succeeding sessions you will interact more, use the meeting chat, or. Uh, just raise your hand or ask your questions verbally. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it from me. So, kung wala na kayong tanong, I hope you guys will enjoy the rest of the day. And uh, we'll meet each other again on uh, on Wednesday, 8.30 to 9.30. Uh, if you're free tomorrow again, you can join the uh, Section B review session from uh, 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. And, uh, but... In case you cannot attend, uh, I'll post a video recording of that session. Okay? So thank you for coming, guys, and have a good day. Bye, everyone. Keep safe. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Finally, you're going to be bosses. Thank you, sir. That's what it's like in the online. That's what it's like. Sa dulo lang yung bye-bye, sir. Yung thank you, sir. Yung lang yung sumasagot yung mga sadyante. But anyway, bye, everyone. Thank you, sir.